Hi, I am Lakshmi Budhi. I work as a consultant with Colabra. Welcome to this talk about automated OS testing using containers. So, first of all, what is OS testing? OS testing involves different components. Say, we may want to test OS installation procedure which includes activities like setting up location, time zone, disk partition, creating accounts, network setup, etc. So once the installation procedure is completed, we want to verify the boot process, whether everything was properly installed or not. And we, we may want to extend this test to logging into specific desktop environment. Optionally, we may want to test a desktop application too. So all these form different parts of OS testing. And also the testing framework uh, should should have the should retain the logs um, uh, and record them so that we can examine them later. So here is an objective for an automated OS testing tool. The testing tool should be easy to set up and run in any environment. Let it be your personal system or a cloud environment, um, wherever it, or even a, a CI/CD environment like Jenkins. Um, so it should be able to um, run it without any issues. Next, since you are using you know, personal laptops or desktop, uh, developers can test their changes locally without depending on QA team. And also the the QA tool should be uh, uh, sh um, should make uh, should make it possible for new developers to contribute to the to the test cases. So yeah, they must be easily add more test cases uh, rather than spending time on learning new languages or something like that. Finally, the testing tool should record the logs and screenshots as test results so that we can examine them uh, in case of regression or failure. So there are few tools which can be used for this um, automated OS testing, but uh, it, it has uh, several shortcomings also. As, uh, so here you can see list of tools. On this, OpenQA is probably the only tool um, uh, which has which fits the requirement, uh, but it has few disadvantages like a high learning curve and a, uh, dedicated hardware setup. So uh, those kind of if if you are not familiar with Perl, probably you have to learn it to write a test cases. So those kind of things comes with it. So we need a testing tool which is much more easier to uh, for new newcomers or beginners to learn within few hours and uh, just start doing the adding test cases uh, just uh, within a day. So with that objective in mind, so here is the proposed tool. So as you can see on the small, uh, it relies on uh, Docker desktop. So as you know, Docker um, is pretty much usable anywhere. You can use it on your laptop or as part of CI, CD or on any cloud platform, you can AWS or GCP, anywhere you want, you can just launch it. So uh, the idea is uh, to use Docker Desktop, make use of Docker Desktop, and then we have a uh, Kemu, Kemu running uh, running inside the Docker Desktop. Uh, and uh, if you are familiar with uh, PY Auto GUI module, you should know it's a pretty simple, uh, dead simple uh, Python module which helps to perform uh, automations. So the idea is to run the PY GUI mod, uh, auto GUI module as a test controller inside the Docker desktop. So we will be launching a KMU instance from the given ISO image um, and set up a remote viewer. Then finally we will be sending, uh, giving input files um, which can ask the uh, PY auto module to perform specific actions, say like sending 
key strokes or mouse events those kind of activities finally all these um, uh, activities are recorded uses using ffmpeg so that we can go back in time and check uh, where the failure happened so let's get started with how how the test tool works so if you look at at the top uh, it's uh, it call it has something called task so it can say for example if you want to test a um, uh, ubuntu or debian isp image um, so uh, installation process you can say say debian installer as a task and then each task uh, has uh, nothing but um, a collection of files uh, they are called action files so these action files uh, in turn will it will tell you what to do uh, what we should look for it, it may be like finding an image or sending a key combination or running specific script uh, or mouse events and those kind of things so this is how the tool works um, it has only uh, only two components majorly task and actions so we will see what is task actually task files uh, are uh, are end with uh, are the files with the end with dot task uh, these contains uh, one or more uh, yaml file names uh, these files will be executed in sequence uh, and each yaml represents represents an action so as you can see here there is a uh, directory called task and it has a hello world dot task file and in this file you can see there is a one yaml file uh, there is couple of uh, yaml files one is open terminal dot yaml and uh, hello world dot yaml so these two are two actions so this uh, task uh, hello world task has two action files so we will next look into what these action files will actually contain so as you can see the actions um, uh, uh, files end with dot yaml and it contains a key value pair um, in this uh, following formats um, say for example it will be uh, key can be key can end with uh, dot png or dot key dot type or sh so each uh, file uh, key extension kind of denotes its um, uh, meaning say if, you, if it is dot png then uh, you are looking for an image um, the action is based on image if it is dot key uh, it's a keyboard action uh, if it is dot sh then you are doing executing some uh, shell script uh, so uh, as you uh, as you can see the value is delay time delay time is like um, after performing some action wait for this this much of time before proceeding further so as you can see uh, on this a couple of screen, screen screenshots below um, on the left hand side you can see uh, open terminal dot yaml and then few uh, png files are available and if you uh, check the uh, open terminal uh, dot yaml you can see it, it has nothing but a list of uh, 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 um, uh, key value pairs say for example in this start menu dot png colon 2 that denotes is like uh, wait for uh, search for uh, start menu png that image and uh, wait for two seconds um, after clicking on it so um, this is how uh, it will search for images so we will be populate the images we will be populating images in a specific directory as we shown on the left hand side and then we will be adding a yaml file uh, to include those images and also mentioning the delay time wherever applicable uh, so um, next we will uh, we will look into some simple actions um, to get uh, to get more clarity say for example in startup menu.png as we discussed before it will find and click on the image uh, startup menu.png and wait for two seconds and uh, the two seconds is the uh, delay time part. Uh, it can be negative also. If it is negative, uh, we will just uh, assert um, whether the my image exists uh, on our current desktop or not. Um, then, uh, if you see the third example, there is um, three images are there: uh, image one, PNG, 
column 5 mg2 png column 5 so actually that means it's, it's uh, um, sometimes um, for uh, for whatever reason we may we may not be able to uh, uh, provide a specific image uh, so we, we have a list of images uh, even if one passes we may want to proceed with it so in those cases we can uh, use this in a syntax so it will try to find uh, a single image uh, from this one uh, from this list if if, if it passes uh, if it uh, unable to find the first image it will say check whether the second is available or not mm. uh, this way at least one image is found then the action is marked as passed uh, then you can see um, here comes the uh, keyboard actions uh, there is a uh, entry dot key colon 60 that means just enters a, uh, it presses the enter key and waits for 60 seconds uh, and then the next one is alt enter dot key and then uh, control shift uh, t dot key all those things you should be uh, familiar uh, familiar by now uh, it's just sending of uh, different combinations you can send a two key combination or a three key combination with it uh, then uh, there is a action called dot type uh, say in this case it's a debian dot type colon five so that means whatever the current mouse position is there it will type um, debian as a text uh, so uh, that's the another action and you have a script uh, we can even put provide uh, shell scripts so this will be executed inside the chemo uh, using python fabric module uh, so you need to set up the your username and password properly for that chemo image and then uh, mouse actions so you can say right uh, dot mouse means uh, obviously it will click right click the uh, pass the right click event and uh, right double click obviously you should know what it must be doing so these are all simple uh, actions um, that can be used with inside the uh, .yaml file uh, the next we will be looking into a small hello world test program um, say here you can see uh, by the way uh, you can uh, clone the repo from uh, above url and uh, you can even um, test it while watching this um, so uh, just to clone the repo and you will have a script uh, run test.sh and uh, just pause the hello world.task so it will produce an output similar to uh, what uh, we have shown in this screenshot uh, so as you can see if you look properly uh, closely you can see it has start menu uh, it, it will search for uh, four Im images uh, obviously you can make it from the image names it's start menu system tools terminal open terminal ready uh, terminal ready so by now that it ensures the terminal is ready so and then we have a uh, hello world.txt it will just read the content of the txt and uh, type it into the uh, terminal so this is another way of executing commands within the terminal inside a desktop environment mm, so uh, that's the uh, another uh, another thing is sometimes when you want to develop uh, new test case say uh, as you can see it's mm, not really uh, you, you, do, you don't have option of viewing what's really going on if say if some, something fails in between we may not know where it failed so, uh, it may show where it failed on the log uh, but uh, viewing it um, while it fails that makes a difference uh, so in such cases say we want to view the test progress what we can do is just uh, you can pause the uh, expose expose port equal to one that environmental variable and then run the same program again now just go ahead and open your browser uh, with your local ip and, um, and just uh, pause in that first uh, the port is going to be 32768 uh, you can uh, once you do that then you can just view the progress of what's really happening you can I would suggest you to open a terminal um, and keep the browser um, and then uh, do it parallelly. you should be able to view what's exactly going on on the terminal as well as on the browser mm. so uh, next um, uh, next I will show you um, a yeah, Debian ISO image testing so actually the ISO image testing you can 
uh, it's already uh, available the images and uh, scripts everything is available um, inside a uh, debian buster branch you can just um, clone it and then uh, expose uh, the port if you like to see what's exactly going on you can run the test uh, start the launch the test and uh, uh, you will be seeing um, the debian installer getting downloaded uh, from the latest uh, version and uh, um, uh, so the installer will be proceeding um, with the installation process um, if you are interested um, you can look into the chemo uh, launch script uh, which is available inside um, images debian 10 launch iso.sh uh, and the remote viewer script is available under uh, setup launch uh, UF. So this is how uh, you can uh, test the existing um, uh, setup if you like to uh, get started uh, with this uh, tool. Uh, so next uh, we will be looking into how to add a new test. New test. Um, so uh, as I mentioned earlier during the start of the uh, session, it should be much more simpler to um, add a new test cases. So here it needs only three steps. First step is um, just uh, put the required images, text files, scripts under a, uh, a test case name, test name. Say for example in this case images slash test name. You can place your images, scripts or test files whatever you want you have. Then just create a YAML file uh, inside that uh, test name directory um, and then uh, mention uh, which images you want to use or which script you want to use how much time you want to wait in between them so those you can see uh, actually you can use hello world um, uh, as your starting point to play around with this and finally you can just add the um, yaml file name into uh, task um, uh, test name dot task file uh, which is re which resides under uh, task directory so once you set it up uh, you can uh, start running um, uh, the test so uh, the next is I will show you wh what the output results will be so the output results will be in the form of screenshots and a video so because we, we uh, with uh, screenshots alone we cannot really figure out what's going on um, so there we will have a one video for each action as well as um, uh, the final video so the videos will be stored in a directory results directory with a unique id um, and you, you will have a simple html file if you can just open it it will be show the output in a html format as you can um, see here uh, so you can see it's uh, first screenshot it is opening the terminal uh, and uh, second probably it might have done the results um, steps by then so by the by the time we have taken the screenshot but if you look into the final video or hello world dot mp4 file you should know what's exactly happened um, so now we next we will quickly look into debian uh, results um, actually this is from a um, link i will share in the next slide um, as you can as you can see uh, it has the uh, on the first row you can see debian launch viewer you can see debian live image or install and also you, it provides you the welcome screen all those things and uh, you, uh, on the second row you can see uh, it, it sets up the location and um, uh, partitioning um, then we have the uh, user account details uh, uh, and then we proceed with uh, base system installation so everything is done um, in a cloud environment um, or a, a personal laptop or uh, actually this thing is run in a, a GitLab CI environment uh, so this will give you uh, easier way of setting up uh, OS um, image images testing for OS images. Uh, so finally, I will share few links uh, where you can um, um, check the check out the source code as well as uh, yeah, other um, results. You can see uh, there is one Ubuntu ISO image results is available, and then you have a Buster ISO. Uh, which uses the manual partition and you have a buster ISO with default partition so those kind of things um, are uh, available you can go ahead and look it's much more easier to add a, a new test cases um, as, as you have seen, uh, uh, seen before 
Mm. So uh, all we need to do is just uh, put the images uh, into a directory and then create a, a key value pair about that image, how the action should uh, will be going to represent and then finally add a task file. So uh, that's all uh, I have. Actually, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to write to me um, um, or ping me uh, on GitLab. Uh, I should be able to answer. Thank you very much. See you. Bye.